Hello everyone. In prior recordings, I did talk about the Division 2. I talked about the things that I felt were an error with the Division 1 and what I hoped for for Division 2. In that recording, I was hoping that the Division 2 would stick to the story. The story is about agents who are the last line of defense. Those agents are more than likely law enforcement military trained. The weapons, I thought, should stick to that story in terms of using weapons that fit a military or law enforcement profile. They did to a certain extent, but there are some weapons that I don't agree with. Then there's also the issue of old weapons. I'll go ahead and talk about all of that. So here's the chart I made to show you all of the weapons I expected to see and also some of the old weapons are in here. Uh, meaning that these are weapons that show up in Division 2, at least some of them. So an example is the SA-80 LSW, uh, M60 and M249. These are weapons from the prior division. They're here in Division 2. The reason I'm not too happy about that is because of the issues that we saw during Division 1. Light machine guns were never in a good place in Division 1. As a matter of fact, people never really used them. The weapons that I just listed would appear to have the same stats in Division 1. That's not good. They will need some sort of uh, buff or something. I am not entirely sure quite yet. But um, another thing that bothers me about this, uh, the SA-80 LSW is fine for a military or law enforcement profile, though I just don't understand how they're acquiring a British weapon. But um, I'll go ahead and get to the M249 and M60. The reason I don't agree with these two is because of their weight. These are squad weapons. People have to help you carry that from what I've seen with military training and tactics. I don't know if they still do it, but I'm aware that back in the old days when the M60 and M249 were in use, one person would carry the weapon with bipod, scope and all, and the other two people that were assigned to the weapon uh, would carry the ammunition. They are that heavy. It does not make sense to see this with agents who are constantly on the move. I'm not saying the game has to be 100% realistic, but it would be nice if they matched the weaponry with the story, is all I'm saying. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this a little bit more while I have this up. The uh, modification system I think is a lot worse than Division 1. A lot of the modifications that you have always have a drawback of some sort. The only one that has a drawback that is manageable from what I saw was the VX-12 scope, which was uh, the 12x sniper scope. It gave you increased headshot damage but reduced your reload time. That's fine. But what isn't fine is something like that one scope, and I forget if it was the reflex, red dot, or whatever, but it minus your critical hit chance for accuracy or something like that. That's not good. Then you have to also look at the equipment you crafted during the beta. The uh, improvised gas mask, body armor, and all that, they just did not have the stats to replace the armor that you would have normally gotten because there are set items. The set items were always stronger than what you crafted. I think to fix both issues, they could have done something like this. For the um, crafted armor, they could have just made it so that you get two guaranteed stats of some kind and you pick them. To do this, it would cost double the normal resources though, which means that it will give you the opportunity to get what you want 
or just gamble it. If you don't want to spend that kind of resources, you can gamble it and just um, try to not double on the resources. As for the weapon modifications, I think that it should have been done based on, on the weapon stats themselves. I think what they were trying to do with the modification system was to customize weapon towards the uh, person's specific uh, desires. I don't know if that's true, but that's kind of the feeling I'm getting. If that were the case, then you just add more weapons to this game. The modifications should be a complement to the base stats, not a complete change in my opinion. So let's look at an example. Let's say if they did add the M27 uh, infantry automatic rifle. That's uh, what IAR means. Then this particular weapon would have a certain base stat, such as high rate of fire um, and accuracy. It would have more rate of fire than an um, assault rifle. Right, so this would fit for people who are able to control their weapons or for that matter like to play kind of a support role. The accuracy and rate of fire shouldn't be determined by a mod. That should just be part of the base thing. This kind of goes into another thing that I suggested when I talked to uh, several other people about the Division 2 and what I also posted in the forums. There's other things too that they could have done to kind of further this. For example, um, the LMG, LSW, DMR, and Sniper categories, I think they should have been able to have access to a bipod. The bipod could have given a uh, plus percent um, stability for being in cover. It'd be completely different from a pistol grip, which would give you just stability for having it, right? So that makes it a very specific mod towards a very specific playstyle. If you know you're going to be in cover and you want to lay down fire for your teammates, then you would pick one of those weapons and put a bipod on. That's kind of where I'm going with that. That's just the weapons, though. There are other little things, though, that happen in the Division 2 that I think could have been done better. I like the idea of trying to do new dynamic stuff like troll points, um, enemy defense points, and things like that. But at the end of the day, it is a nightmare. When you get a control point, they need supplies in terms of food, water, and components. The annoying thing is that in order to donate said supplies, you have to go to the control point and do it. I would have rathered a donation system based on uh, a safe house or a settlement. That way you could just donate it there and they would distribute it automatically for you. No traveling to the other spot. That way you can get things done all in one. The settlements or safe houses where you go to uh, sell this, the junk that you get and things like that. So you end up doing more than one thing at a time when you go to uh, the safe house and the settlement. Another thing that they could have done is maybe make a late game modification system for settlements and uh, safe houses. Uh, make like farms or water systems or something. Something that would allow these control points to be more efficiently supplied. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and link you all this so you can um, look at this if you want to. But that's the most I have. Thanks for listening.